Welcome to uh, another round of IME webinar. Actually, this is our first first session with a, a local presenter. I mean, outside uh, a professor or an exceptional educator. Okay, Prof Professor Amin. He is. Let me just go back. I, I, I haven't memorized this part. He is a UCAM professor, and he's the deputy director e-learning center for Ad academic development. I've actually been following some his work and it's pretty amazing. He's got a lot of words, awards in teaching and so on, but I'm not going to go into his teaching awards and whatever, all these other science awards, which is, 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 is great. But we focus more on the, in terms of e-learning and online education. And actually, he is a strong proponent of open educational resources, an active contributor of Web2 resources. I hope he will show some of his stuff. Uh, especially his animated cartoons. You can see a picture of him here. Let me just point out here. You can see here. This is him. This is his uh, what animated cartoon character, which is pretty cool. You can see here. There. I'm pointing. Okay. Uh, he has a publication entitled Web Two Tools in Education Series, which is access accessible free on script. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm the one that advised him to script, but he became a legend there. He has actually <laughs> nearly 100,000 people have uh, viewed it or read it in the last six months. And also he has developed, which is even more interesting, he has developed a Web2 mobile application, which is known as, uh, I think he has to pronounce it, JIT2 or JITSU, uh, which he'll also probably cover. And that one has actually attracted uh, uh, people from over 94 countries worldwide to use, and it's very interesting. Uh, and if you're looking for a place to find uh, tips on how to use different tools, especially social media, Web2, it's a good starting point because he's covered, I don't know how many, 20 or 15 or 30, I don't know, he's covered a lot. And I think during this presentation, we will hear about what's happening in Malaysia and also what he is doing. So I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to pass it over to Prof. Amin. And I'm looking forward to his session and, and uh, I'll probably join in later. I'll be in the background making some noise in the chat room. So please use the chat room to discuss with him, give him ideas and suggestions. I'm out of here now. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me now? Okay, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa and good morning everybody. Thank you for joining this uh, session. Uh, basically, in this session, I will share with you some of the findings uh, related to the uh, implementation of e-learning in Malaysia so hopefully I will be able to highlight uh, some issues and challenges in terms of implementing e-learning in institutions of higher learning and uh, some of the lesson learned can you hear me okay let me uh, move on now actually uh, I was uh, asked to, uh, I was commissioned by the Ministry of Higher Education of Malaysia to conduct a nationwide study on the, uh, on several areas related to the e-learning implementation uh, in Malaysia's institutions of higher learning. So we looked at uh, six areas, policy, governance, learning management system, e-content development, training and uh, integration of e-learning in teaching and learning and we explored e each uh, aspects in terms of the status the trends and some of the problems and challenges of the implementation so uh, I was hoping that you know maybe some of these issues uh, that we have uh, uh, discovered uh, will be very useful for those of you who are I intending to implement uh, e-learning in your institutions or if you have already implemented you know maybe some of these issues uh, will be very helpful um, you know uh, as uh, a guide um, you know to improve the, the implementation okay now uh, we managed to get samples from 26 um, institutions of higher learning including uh, 20 public universities uh, I think three uh, private universities and three polytechnics. Mm -hmm. Now, because uh, the main samples are mainly from public universities, uh, we are talking about you know 
about the uh, the, the normal programs. Eh? Uh, so we do not have so much data from the open learning programs and you know uh, especially virtual or e-learning programs but you know uh, we managed to get around six more than more than 6,300 students to participate and 1,635 lecturers uh, we managed to gather this data in about uh, two months time the trick is that uh, we uh, provided the survey using survey monkey but we put a carrot uh, I think at that time uh, uh, the there was a gift of um, I you know the latest uh, I touch okay so the carrot actually helped us to gather a lot of data the ministry was a bit surprised that how we were able to get so you know such a uh, uh, you know a bigger size a big size of uh, samples okay uh, let's look at some of the uh, the findings and you know what are some of the issues and lesson learned okay now it is quite interesting that um, uh, the majority of um, the samples of universities that we uh, gather do not have e-learning policy yet uh, now this is about a year ago uh, I think by now, uh, because of the because of the um, you know in Malaysia we have got this um, DASA e pembelajaran negara or the national e-learning policy as a result of our study actually. Um, I think now it is required that each university uh, have their own uh, policy. Now, why is policy important? Now, from my experience and uh, our interaction with other um, uh, colleagues from other universities uh, especially in public universities unless an auntie is part and parcel is 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 is, is uh, written as a policy then uh, lecturers ex uh, especially will not be bothered uh, to you know take part in e-learning uh, nowadays people are so much engrossed in um, you know publishing and doing research that they say no why should I waste time eh? But I think more and more, I think by now probably this has increased. And uh, from the public university point of view, policy is very important. When, when you've got policy, you can do many things. Eh? Then you can start asking for funds, you know, to develop content and so forth. But uh, we also found that as far as uh, formulating the policy, uh, none of the stakeholders were uh, involved. Meaning to say, short scenario lah. Uh, the policy was, um, you know, developed by the university, maybe um, uh, internally. But I think it's also important when you create this policy, try to get, especially the end users, uh, the, the the students, to say, you know, what they want and so forth, and also to involve uh, some stakeholders. Okay. Uh, I saw here, do you think if different uh, departments develop their own e-learning or blended learning policy? Yeah, I think that is what is meant by policy. Huh? Uh, some universities have got uh, platforms, but because there's no policy in terms of usage, you know, whether it should be blended, whether it should be supplementary, especially in, uh, in the public university, uh, the students are residential. We see them uh, day in and day, day out uh, in comparison to distance learning institutions where they don't see them eh? so e-learning is probably more required than in, in public universities eh? so this is why uh, I think uh, policy uh, is very important okay let me move on to my next slide okay so this is the data now uh, again I think it's also good, you know, in in uh, when you're formulating the policy, to also get input from uh, external stakeholders, eh, the alumni, the industry, and so forth. Okay, let's move on. Ah, okay, I want to highlight this: that uh, out of those who have got policy, okay, uh, some of them did not make e-learning uh, compulsory. Uh, now, uh, when I when I say e-learning, um, the traditional uh, way of looking at e-learning is when you have your LMS, so you put your stuff in. Eh? 
of course e-learning can be uh, defined in many ways uh, if if somebody is using facebook for you know uh, as part of teaching and learning to me that's also part of e-learning so we are talking about the formal um, e-learning uh, not the you no know, the, the informal the personal learning environment but from the mo uh, formal side even some universities uh, dare not to make it compulsory uh, so the moment it's not compulsory then you see that the usage is not so good uh, so it's good if the university can say uh, we want to make it compulsory we encourage uh, blended learning and uh, you can do any form of e-learning you know it can it can be uh, integrated in the LMS or you can also um, you know uh, do it out of the LMS huh? okay let me move on now oh okay why do we need uh, we need to get feedback uh, from external parties I think especially uh, for example uh, in UKM now we have uh, move away from uh, the uh, the traditional uh, LMS to a more um, dynamic uh, LMS. It's 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 actually portfolio based. Uh, later I will maybe I can I will show you later. It's called iFolio Integrated Portfolio Management System, uh, where we integrate actually three three portfolio the cost portfolio which is you know like the LMS the teaching portfolio and the learning portfolio uh, now this is interesting uh, the learning portfolio actually uh, we thought that you know uh, students should be able to gather their portfolio from year one uh, till year four you know when they graduate and even when they graduate they can still access the portfolio uh, so you know this is what I meant by external parties you know uh, one of our alumni was saying would it be possible for me to uh, you know, uh, go back to my uh, learning environment uh, uh, and to you know to, to see what I've learned in the past eh? so in our new uh, LMS we have integrated this tree uh, so the alumni can still come into the LMS and you know uh, not only uh, look at what they have learned but they can also contribute because uh, they can build their own portfolio okay now uh, the other thing is about incentive uh, award and uh, quality assurance um, I think because of the uh, movement towards you know this ISI uh, Scopus publication uh, there's very little incentives uh, uh, given to lecturers who are very active in e-learning very active in um, uh, developing content okay so I think you know in your policy uh, there should be a clear um, indication of the incentive for those who are involved in e-learning I'm sure you know those of you who are very uh, active in e-learning it's actually taking more of your time uh, so unless and until you have got clear policy in UKM for example um, uh, e-learning uh, I mean uh, ac activity in e-learning is part of the yearly appraisal as well as for pro promotional purposes uh, so if this is part of the policy then people are willing to invest uh, invest time eh? now the other thing is that uh, some people have got policy but they have not got clear uh, e-learning implementation so it is good if you can have a three-year a five-year um, you know implementation plan you know how how you want to see it you know uh, be implemented uh, successfully okay uh, I see can you can you hear me I see some uh, a note from no there I hope she is able to see me okay I'm going to move on now to uh, Ah, okay in terms of uh, supporting the policy I've got here that uh, not this uh, we've got some questions that we ask the management okay uh, especially the e-learning um, coordinators at the universities and they say that they don't have problems from the management they don't have problems from the students eh? uh, but uh, they get 
uh, lack of support from the lecturers. Mm. I think why this is happening, one uh, probably because there is no clear policy, there is no clear uh, indication of the incentive you know, of uh, getting involved uh, in e-learning. So that's why, you know, in general, the, the e-learning administrators felt that, you know, they do not get as much support uh, from the lecturers uh, in comparison to the uh, top management. So no problem from the deans, from the uh, 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 vice chancellor and so forth. Okay? No problem from the school, no problem from the students, mainly from the lecturers. Okay, and uh, for, for universities with policy, um, you know, normally people are able to, to follow them, okay, and uh, very little, uh, you know, fail to comply with the policy. Okay, uh, let me see. Okay, now, the other thing is about the governance. Uh, we see here that only five uh, institutions did not have a specific uh, center, department, or unit to manage e-learning. So you imagine that you know there is some sort of e-learning, but there is n no uh, specific uh, coordination. Uh, so I think for a successful implementation of e-learning, one is you have to have a policy, and you need to have a clear uh, structure. Okay, and there are many forms of structure. Uh, some universities will put e-learning, I think m uh, majority of uh, universities uh, used to put e-learning under the computing center. Uh, and I think more and more now, uh, people are putting this, the, the uh, portfolio of uh, e-learning uh, under the uh, teaching and learning. I think this is, this is a better option. Uh, you can get the, uh, the computing center to to talk, to work with the teaching and learning um, uh, center, but I think e-learning should be located uh, at the teaching and learning center. Uh, in UKM, we don't have a teaching and learning center. We've got this um, center for academic advancement. Uh, so one of the portfolio is e-learning. So I think this is also crucial uh, for successful implementation uh, because if you, g if you uh, let the uh, technical guys to look after the e-learning, then they will be only concerned about the you know, the, the hardware, uh, about the technicalities. Eh? But if you get the educators uh, to be involved, I think then their concern will be more uh, on learning uh, rather than just the technology. Uh, okay, I've got here a question. Uh, why do you need to centralize the management? I think if you've got uh, a centralized body, then you know um, you can uh, things can be done much faster and more more efficient. Huh? But uh, if e-learning is you know placed in many departments, then people say ah, it's your job, it's your job, huh? so things will not be done uh, proper properly. Okay. So thank you for the questions. You, know, you can uh, keep on uh, adding the questions so that I can make the presentation uh, more relevant. Now, this is uh, in terms of budget. Uh, at the moment, I don't think any university have got uh, a specific budget on e-learning, but the budget will come under the uh, academic management. Eh? It will go, un I think, under the uh, uh, deputy vice chancellor of academic. Uh, but if you have got a proper governance, uh, like that uh, I was mentioning mention, uh, mentioning earlier, then you know you can you can ask for budget. Uh, so Alhamdulillah, in UKM, uh, we don't have uh, so much uh, problem. And if we see uh, in terms of allocation of the budget, it's mainly for training, okay? It's for uh, authoring software, okay? Ninety-three percent. Uh, not much on uh, benchmarking uh, and consultancy component. Uh, so uh, um, I think a lot of the budget normally goes in terms of uh, authoring software. And this is where I think when I get to the e-content, I will give some suggestions that people do not realize that there are uh, many uh, free 
uh, authoring tools or tools that we can use to uh, develop content, to manage content and to share content. But I think increasingly in Malaysia now, people are seeing that you know um, you can you can make use of many uh, alternatives uh, in terms of uh, creating content. So we'll talk a bit about that uh, later. Okay, uh, in terms of uh, governance, okay, I will skip this. These are merely uh, opinions uh, that uh, so far I think. Uh, okay, so what are some of the problems and uh, challenges in terms of governance? Uh, shortage of staff, lack of incentive. When I say uh, shortage of staff, uh, many universities do not have dedicated unit uh, for content development. Uh, and and the the new universities, I think the lack of staff also involve uh, staff who are knowledgeable to provide training. Uh, lack of incentive uh, for those. Eh? Now um, in UKM we are very lucky that uh, we've got this uh, uh, deputy director portfolio, and for, uh, for each faculty we have got uh, e-learning uh, coordinators, and they are, they get monthly allowances. Uh, I don't think uh, many universities get this. Uh, so in many universities, they will have only one one person in charge. Uh, the rest are in terms of committee members. Uh, so committee members can also work, but you know, if you can have uh, proper governance, then that will be uh, very useful. Okay, lack of e-learning policy. We've mentioned about that. Lack of e-learning uh, governance structure. Uh, I think many universities. I won't mention uh, the university, but I know one. Uh, leading university, uh, they are still struggling. Only, only I think about maybe one or two months uh, back, they have got a proper structure. Uh, so uh, when I when I meet my colleagues uh, in MIPTA, MIPTA is the Council of uh, Coordinators of E-Learning in Malaysia's uh, public universities. We see that uh, problems of implementation is uh, is I think partly the result of this uh, unclear structure of governance uh, who is responsible okay so unless and until you've got a proper structure a deputy director or a coordinator then you know uh, things will be much uh, easier okay uh, let's move on okay now LMS <laughs> Okay, uh, uh, we found that uh, uh, in comparison to five years back, all universities have got their own LMS. Okay, now half of them use open source LMS. Okay, 34% uh, started with purchase commercial SMS, Blackboard, uh, WebCity. But I think most, uh, I think they have now left the commercial ones. I can say uh, at present, you've got about maybe 90% 90 people using Moodle. Okay? Uh, okay, I see your Moodle, Google, and Noodles. Huh? Okay, why? Because it's cheaper, you know, you're able to uh, customize according to your needs. And uh, increasingly also, people are uh, uh, developing in-house. Uh, so in UKM, uh, we uh, initially we we use a system developed by IM IMU. We customize them, but uh, um, uh, at the moment we are uh, piloting our own system called iFolio, and we will uh, roll out uh, using uh, uh, iFolio starting next semester. Why? Uh, because uh, our system is uh, portfolio based. Uh, it is something I think it is a new way of looking at uh, LMS. Eh? So the LMS is only part of it. Eh? The cost management, po the cost portfolio integrated with the teaching portfolio integrated with the learning portfolio. Eh? So this is something we are trying out. Eh? Maybe uh, later I will uh, share uh, with you some of uh, what we have done. Eh? Okay. Uh, mm, now, the other thing is that um, when people started using uh, LMS, people started using, I think uh, the reason why people are a bit late using Moodle because they were not able to initially eh, integrate uh, the system with the uh, students, uh, SIS, Students Information System. But I think, um, I would say now, by now, maybe 90, 
90% uh, of universities, uh, the LMS is integrated with uh, the SIS, eh, the uh, Student Information System and Staff Information System. I think this is this is important. Uh, if you can if you can get the system to talk to each other, uh, so that you know there can be single login and so forth. Okay, uh, I still have about 40 minutes. Now uh, we see here uh, most lecturers are using LMS. Most lecturers, eh, about 70 70 percent, uh, um, and uh, I mean in general people are people are pleased. Uh, they're saying that you know it's good, it's reliable, user friendly, you know, blah blah blah. Um, but in, in reality, I think in reality, um, you know. The question to us is, uh, how much, how much uh, interactive content is actually in the LMS? Um, uh, for some lecturers, just put, just putting PowerPoint and you know the notes in in terms of DOC, that's e-learning. Eh? So um, I think the first challenge is to get people to uh, you know manage their content using the uh, centralized LMS. Now the second challenge is to get them to create. Uh, and manage uh, interactive content. Yeah, dumping notes is not really good instruction. Yeah, okay, uh, this is why in our new LMS, uh, the environment is task-based, uh, so it's not uh, just putting notes and you know. I call the I call this the ice, the 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 fridge. You know, you open the fridge, you put things, and then the students come open the fridge. You know, so it's not a box, it's not a library where you just put objects and 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 things. Eh? But I think the environment should be lively, yeah, so that you know uh, students can can be engaged while in the environment. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. In UKM, e-learning is uh, compulsory. Uh, hundred percent of our courses are online. Uh, when I say hundred percent our courses online, meaning to say that the moment uh, you open the iFolio, students will see all the courses. Uh, but whether You've got good content in the courses, depend on the lecturers. Uh, but uh, otherwise, because uh, our system uh, talks to the uh, students' information system, so all the courses are available to to be uh, online. Okay, uh, who monitors the content? Okay, uh, we monitor the content at the uh, centralized uh, agency. And uh, you, you know that in UKM we've got uh, the coordinators, so th so the coordinators will have will also um, monitor the content at the department faculty level. Uh, and then we've got competition. We've got like uh, the most active faculty by semester. We've got the most active uh, course uh, per semester. So this this will encourage people to to uh, to do more. Okay. Now, who monitors? Uh, okay. Now we also f we we also wanted to find out whether the other twenty twenty seven percent or twenty three percent who's not using uh, the LMS are they using other uh, other uh, uh, what we call you know uh, e-learning tool? Okay. So we found that to a certain extent, you know, the lecturers are using other applications like SlideShare, Facebook. YouTube, but not more, not to a great extent, and we also found that uh, there are lecturers who are besides using the LMS also using uh, the other applications. So I think this is great. Uh, but uh, uh, the way forward, I think, uh, is to 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 get people to integrate, to integrate, uh, to embed uh, all these application in the LMS. Uh, I, I know, you know, you can do that in Moodle. In uh, our iFolio, if I have time, I will uh, show you. We can embed all this, um, you know, interactive application uh, within our learning environment. So I think that should be the way forward. Okay. Uh, okay. This is some of the usage. Not so great, but at least we know that some of our lecturers are um, using some of these, eh? some communication tools and so forth. Okay. Let's move on. Ah, in terms of frequency of using, okay. Uh, in terms of frequency, uh, most of the lecturers access the LMS once a week. <laughs> Imagine that, 
Uh, not many are using them on a daily occasion. Uh. Okay. Now, I also did a study recently uh, on lecturers and students on uh, social networking sites. Uh. A nationwide study, 93% uh, of our students are on Facebook and 90% of our lecturers are on Facebook. Okay. And our students spend uh, about one to three hours daily on Facebook. Uh, but one interesting thing is that uh, uh, they do not, uh, you know, students will have friends but not the lecturers. Uh, some lecturers make use of Facebook. Uh, so um, I think we have to find ways how to get uh, people to really use the, uh, the LMS that we, ha we are providing. Uh, uh, so, so it's not only just to have the LMS, but the the LMS should be friendly, and you know, I think the keyword is useful for learning, uh, not just for storing. Uh, LMS should not be just for storing, but you know, an environment for active and meaningful learning. Mm. Okay, so once a week thing is not a good thing. Okay, we ask the students, uh, students are in, in, in interested eh, to do uh, self-directed learning activities, uh, collaborative assignments, in, in interactive quizzes. So I think uh, this, is, this is very crucial that, uh, you know, you, you integrate uh, as many uh, quote-unquote doing. Eh? You, you, you know the proverb, I hear, I forget. I see, I remember, I do, I understand. Eh? So I think it is very important that the environment that we create, uh, especially the formal one, the LMS, allows for students to say things, to do things. Then they will learn more. Uh, otherwise, you know, it will be uh, very mechanical. Okay, I have a question from No here. Probably you think students should be given access to post questions. Of course, of course. Uh, I think uh, it is uh, it is very necessary yeah, for us to uh, get feedback from students, and you know it would be good if you can also get them to create content uh, and share them uh, with their colleagues, uh, with the world, and embed this in your in your LMS. Uh, I think that should be the way forward. Eh? Okay. Uh, okay. What are some of the problems? Um, we found the main the main challenge is that most academic staff are satisfied with existing teaching methods. Uh, some of them say, "Okay, I'm fine," but uh, um, from my side, uh, I think at the end of the day, learning should be improved. Uh, um, you know, there is no point of uh, engaging students in e-learning. You know, very rote. Uh, you know, just exchanging notes and so forth, and at the end of the day, there's no improvement in the link. And I think this is this is an area uh, for research. Uh, many institutions are doing e-learning, but not many have done studies uh, to look at how much you know the e-learning that they have done uh, have actually uh, affected a students' learning. How do you measure effective learning using all? assessment methods uh, okay now improvement can be uh, in terms of uh, not, not not necessarily the grades uh, improvement in terms of you know uh, soft skills uh, improvement in terms of uh, attitude and motivation uh, yeah engagement uh, but you know uh, measuring engagement uh, is another thing okay and uh, some of the other problems uh, challenges are uh, academic staff lacking IT expertise Maybe the, the, the senior ones, too busy with research and uh, publication, burdened with heavy teaching loads, eh, especially probably uh, in the private sectors, uh, and skeptical of e-learning. Mm, okay, I've got questions here. Ah, how, do, how, do you, how do you measure soft skills? Um, you know, one way is to look at the employability of your graduates. Uh, so I know that uh, as far as uh, employability is concerned, I must say that the uh, UIA, uh, IIUM, uh, Islamic Islamic uh, uh, International Islamic University of Malaysia has got the best uh, employability. Yeah? 
Okay, what are some of the problems um, by those who do not use the LMS? Lack of training, no time, prefer traditional methods, uh, burden to existing teaching load. Eh? Some felt that, you know, the more the more um, the more e-learning, the more time you have. Eh? Okay, uh, let's move on. Now, let's look at training. Now, it is interesting that um, uh, all universities uh, conduct some kind of training. Okay. And, however, uh, not uh, all universities conduct training for students and for uh, support staff. Okay. So, we are assuming that students will be able to pick up. Uh, but from my, from my my experience, you know, um, you know, this is not true. Uh, students need to be given a short training, a brief, uh, you know, introduction to e-learning and the system use. Eh? So at the moment, I think uh, the Ministry of Higher Education has set up this. I don't know whether you're familiar with uh, CAP e-learning, the Critical Agenda Project. Okay, and one of the KPIs to be met by universities is to uh, make sure that you know uh, training is also conducted uh, to students okay now the other thing is that uh, only one third uh, expose uh, the lecturers to web 2.0 application uh, okay I, th I think this is very interesting many of the trainings are related to the management system you know you get uh, the lecturers to be familiar with the with the your LMS but e-learning should be more than that uh, I think we should also look into the tools and the strategies uh, to engage uh, students in the e-learning environment. Now, I uh, I'm involved as a consultant to the uh, uh, National Training Academy. I don't know whether you've heard of ACAP, Academy Pengajian Tinggi Malaysia. They have got this master trainer programs uh, for e-learning. So they bring the trainers to the to ACAP, and we train them. And I did a little survey. Uh, I um, actually uh, listed 50 top learning tools uh, in 2010. No, I did a few times. And I was surprised that many of the trainers, not to mention the lecturers, uh, are not familiar at all uh, with things like Twitter. <laughs> you imagine, you know, uh, our lecturers are not on Twitter. Okay? So, uh, this is why uh, I thought that I must do something as the chairman of MIFTA. So, uh, I think beginning April last year, I started a few in initiatives and I will share with, uh, I think, you guys uh, in a moment. Eh? Okay. Um, yeah, I think there is no need to train students with social media, you're right. Eh? But there are, there are other, uh, especially... You need to get them to be familiar with your new LMS. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Maybe just to get... Uh, uh, can I just uh, share my screen? Okay, let's try. Okay. Okay, I think... Uh, Okay, let me know if you are able to see my screen now. Okay, this is Jitsu. Okay, this is Jitsu. Jitsu stands for just in time training to you. Uh, 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 the idea here is that uh, we, we cannot see the screen yet. Uh, we we can't see the screen. Okay. Can you start the screen sharing? Maybe you haven't started the screen. There's a button start screen sharing. You must click on the start screen sharing. Okay, I will I will do it again. Okay, eh? just click the start. Okay, I'm going. Okay, no problem. I'm disappearing it. Thanks. Okay. okay, let me know if you can see it. Yeah, I think you should be able to see it. Can you see it now? Okay. Now, this is called just in-time training to you. And this is uh, accessible uh, across platform. Uh, you can make use of your iPhone, your Android. Uh, I'm, what I'm showing to you now is uh, web-based. So I felt that uh, this is a way to get uh, uh, lecturers uh, to learn, to know more about uh, Web 2.0 tools that they can integrate in teaching and learning uh, at their own time. Eh? So I've, I've uh, divided into uh, uh, 10 categories. 
social networking tools, sharing tools, collaboration, communication and so forth. And for each of the tools, okay, uh, for example, I think many lecturers are not familiar with wall visual and voice thread. Huh? Okay. So, um, a short overview is given. The concept that I use here is just enough, just for me, just in time. Just enough information. Just for me, you can see here, I've got uh, materials uh, created in four formats. So, maybe Zaid uh, likes animation. Eh? So, um, the information is given in the form of a uh, uh, video. Uh, I've animated this. Okay. Uh, this, the information is also given in the form of a manual. Okay. So this is uh, one uh, format. Okay. Uh, you c the information also is also given in the form of a slide. Eh? So you can download the slide. So I've hosted all this uh, in Web 2.0 tools. I'm walking the talk. I'm teaching about Web 2.0 and I'm using Web 2.0. And uh, just now I hosted in YouTube. Now I'm hosting it in SlideShare. So, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, as Zaid was mentioning, uh, although initially I designed this for UKM and also Malaysian lecturers, but this has been accessed by users from 95 countries. This morning I checked from 852 cities worldwide. Huh? So, I hope that uh, at least uh, this is a, a contribution uh, from UKM and from Malaysia uh, to the world. Okay. So I've also got uh, uh, a channel dedicated to Web 2.0. So it's uh, slideshare.net slash prof. Dr. Amin. Eh? And there are about 70 slides on how to make use of. So you may, you may be familiar with some of the tools. You may not be familiar. Eh? So feel free to, to, um, to visit them. Okay, I've stopped the screen. Let me move on. Now in terms of training, the main mode of training is still face-to-face. Uh, which is uh, interesting in a sense. Uh, I would like to walk the talk. You know, the training on e-learning I think can also be done um, uh, in a blended mode. Eh? So in UKM, what we do, uh, our training is done through uh, an e-training management system. Uh, so when the uh, so that um, lecturers are familiar with e-learning, you know, they 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 walk the talk. Eh? Okay, and. Uh, but the problem with face-to-face -face training uh, in UKM, we found that uh, we are not able to train many lecturers. Uh, so this is why we came up with the idea of Jitsu, just in-time training to you. We have tested with Web 2.0 content. Uh, we will now uh, get more and more of our content delivered via Jitsu, so that you know training can be on demand, uh, just in time. Uh, so they need not wait till. Uh, September to attend a course, they can just open their handset, they can just open the tablet and get you know uh, enough enough uh, training to get started. Okay, so far um, I think it's well received eh, in UKM. Okay, uh, actually Zaid it's uh, jitsu.ukm.my slash web 2.0 because we've got another jitsu uh, for the students. Uh, this uh, what we call the uh, lit um, information, information, tech, information liter literacy courses eh, is now offered to students uh, via handphones. Okay, let's move on. Um, what else? Um, okay, uh, only twenty. 23% make e-learning training compulsory for academic staff. I think the ministry is doing a good job. They've got this uh, KPI where they they've got targets. Huh? Each university will have to train so many uh, so many uh, lecturers. So I think uh, we need to train lecturers uh, not only with the learning management system but with the uh, latest uh, e-learning uh, uh, approaches, uh, latest e-learning tools eh, so that they are uh, well equipped eh, to uh, make learning a uh, successful one. Okay, let me move on. Um, ah, topics. Uh, training topics conducted um, that interest lecturers. I think lecturers would like to know
how to conduct assessment online you know how to make uh, uh, so these are these are the topics that they are interested in content development okay and e-learning a bit about instruction design eh? so I think uh, training should not be solely limited uh, on how to use your model but should go into a bit about instruction design principles you know a quick content development and also I think uh, you know how to create online uh, quizzes and so forth you know how to do a survey how to do use uh, poll daddy and so forth eh? okay uh, let's move on okay problems in terms of training lack of motivation among the teaching staff and lack of attendance during training you know we do face this when we uh, when we send the brochures uh, um, you know like you know you get uh, about let's say 40 people who, who said they will they will be coming to the to the uh, training and then on the training day you get only about 15 20 uh, so how do you do this I think Zaid have got uh, a way you know once you sign in you know if you fail to attend that will be the last the first and the last eh? but I don't know that works whether that works well with uh, with uh, you know uh, lecturers in public universities okay uh, finally uh, most lectures do not attend e-learning training because the training schedule uh, clashes with the teaching activities so I think this is very important that when you have a training programs uh, make it during the semester break uh, or you know again if you can have your training online you know so that they can uh, access to the training materials anytime uh, anywhere okay let's move on okay mm okay now now we're talking about content development uh, earlier we, we 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 spoke about the need for a governance the need for a portfolio or the need for a structured unit to 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 coordinate e-learning but now uh, we found that only half of the uh, of the uh, institutions have got a center department to manage e-content development uh, assalamualaikum prof karim nice to have you here <laughs> okay now uh, I know that IMU have got a very uh, strong uh, structured unit of uh, content development uh, so what they do uh, they get uh, lecturers uh, who are called subject matter experts to work with the team so that content can be uh, developed more professionally uh, now in UKM we've tried a few uh, strategies uh, I think with public universities it's very it's very difficult to get like a big unit like uh, like IMU uh, so to get you know one or two uh, designers you know you have to wait for for years eh? so the what happens then uh, the next step is to to buy or authoring tools okay now this is going to be very expensive how many how many tools can you buy and where to place them eh? So I feel that as far as content development is concerned, this is my personal view and this is what I've been advocating in UKM, is to get uh, some uh, basic software. I would like to uh, lecturers to have something like, you know, uh, you, we know that uh, all lecturers will have uh, Microsoft Office. Uh, they, can have, they can use PowerPoint, they can use Word, you know. Now I would like lecturers actually to have uh, an authoring tool, a simple authoring tool on their de desktop. Uh, so at the moment, we are using Camtasia Studio uh, because uh, Articulate, Captivate, they're a bit expensive. Uh, so we have purchased 1,000 license, and uh, you know because uh, I personally feel that uh, with Camtasia, you can create basic uh, content. You can turn your PowerPoint into video, uh, but otherwise. Uh, the way forward is to train lecturers with other tools that are free of charge, you know, uh, using Go Animate, using Screencast Omatic. So this is what we are doing now. Huh? We are training. I think the the the, uh, the way forward is to uh, uh, the buffet approach uh, to to tell them, okay, these are the various tools. Okay, why don't you make use of them according to your needs, according to your context, according to your uh, subject matter. 
Okay. Uh, I think now people are moving away from using Flash. Uh, when we did the study, we found that uh, applications used for e-content are Flash, followed by Articulate, uh, Captivate, Camtasia, uh, Lecture Maker, and Reptivity. And what MIPTA is doing now is uh, suggesting to the Ministry of Higher Education uh, that vendors now come as um, what we say a consortium uh, so that we can negotiate the price of the uh, software the authoring tools much cheaper than what we do now okay so we're putting a paper here okay uh, uh, that vendors uh, you know come in to the universities uh, via a consortium like you know uh, how we are purchasing uh, Microsoft and so forth okay let's move on mm, okay major support uh, provided by uh, institutions to lecturers advice I think lecturers uh, they need you know most lecturers will be happy if they have got you know, a simple tool eh, like a screencast or matic Camtasia they don't need large funds eh? although I know like in UTM uh, they provide a fund up to 5,000 ringgit uh, for lecturers who's willing to create interactive e-content. Eh? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, give me another 10 or 15 minutes. Okay. Let's move on. Um, yeah. I think as far as um, taking part, most lecturers say you know they're willing to take part in developing e-content so uh, I'm not so sure whether we need a dedicated unit my personal view is that if you provide lecturers with the with right tools the appropriate tools they should be able to create uh, their own content and I think lecturers are uh, the best person to create e-content eh? okay let me see um, now another hindrance is that uh, some lectures are a bit uh, reluctant to create content and share them in uh, the LMS because they say you know uh, people will uh, I, I think we need to educate our lectures about uh, a creative license and so forth eh? you know that they need to share okay so let's move on copyright issues yeah okay in terms of integrating um, I think because uh, uh, the data that we have got here are mainly public universities so many of them are using e-learning as a supplementary mode uh, only few universities are using them uh, on a uh, as a blended mode so I think that's uh, understandable okay um, okay because I think lecturers most lecturers access once a week so most students access their online courses once a week eh? so so I think if our uh, LMS is user friendly if our LMS you know, has got a lot of activities that can engage learners then I think uh, they will uh, access it you know, like they access uh, Facebook okay now here uh, it is interesting that uh, that most contents are still in, in the form of PDF PowerPoint DOC and so forth. Huh? There's very little interactive content. Huh? So I think uh, this is this is uh, an area lacking huh? in terms of e-learning. How we can actually create interactive content that can engage the learners, and how in our content uh, there can be collaboration and sharing. Uh, so I think this is this is this is the challenge huh? for uh, for creating content. Okay. Um, now, in general, I think students felt that you know, uh, e-learning is very beneficial. Is having a positive impact on the performance. So that's uh, quite a positive uh, outlook from the students and also from uh, the lecturers. So it's now you know, um, trying to create an environment where um, students can be engaged in the e-learning. Okay. What are some of the problems and challenges? Um, okay, balancing teaching and research, time constraint. Um, okay, from the students' point of view, 
you know access is still a problem bandwidth you know um, you're not able to access the LMS and I think this is also important feedback from lecturers are taking too long now this need to be taken seriously yeah? now if you have if you put content if you have conducted forums you know uh, you must make sure that you give um, a prompt feedback yeah? so I think this is, this is very important okay I think uh, let me see yeah I think I've got uh, maybe four four three or four slides and then I will show uh, iFolio that we have created in UKM so Alhamdulillah from our research we managed to make uh, we managed to suggest few things to the ministry and finally they uh, came up with this DASA e pembelajaran negara national e learning policy and I'm sure many things can be uh, can be improved huh? I hope the second version or the policy can be uh, out okay I've just mentioned that uh, you can download many of this uh, data from SlideShare okay at the moment we've got about 50,000 views uh, from uh, these uh, findings okay this is the latest one you see here okay uh, e-learning policy content development governance so if you like to know if you want to get the detail you go to SlideShare and you know type MIPTA or just type my name okay what I'm going to do now uh, okay by the way uh, we've also published the full report this is the book you can also download for free from ISUU or from Scribit uh, okay what I'm going to do now is share the screen for the last five minutes uh, to show you the LMS that we have created that we're using in uh, UK okay it's called iFolio it's called iFolio let me show you the home first portfolio and uh, learning portfolio so this this site here is the uh, teaching site huh? so there are uh, what we call pages for UKM these are compulsory um, information related to teaching that need to be given to UKM and my pages eh? so uh, lecturers will create their own portfolio this is how I uh, describe my portfolio the LMS that we have created that we are using in uh, UKM okay it's called iFolio I think uh, let me see yeah I think I've got uh, maybe four four three or four slides and then I will show uh, iFolio that we have created in UKM so Alhamdulillah from our research we managed to make uh, we managed Uh, so we do not have so much data Jitsu, so that you know training can be on demand uh, just in time uh, so they need not wait till uh, September to attend a course they can just open their handset you want to get the detail you go to slide share and you know type MIPTA or just type my name okay what I'm going to do now okay by the way uh, we've also published the full report this is the book you can also download for free from ISUU or from Scribit uh, okay what I'm going to do now is share the screen for the last five minutes uh, to show you the LMS that we have created that we're using in uh, UKM okay it's called iFolio it's called iFolio let me show you the home first so it integrates a teaching portfolio, course portfolio, and uh, learning portfolio. So this this site here is the uh, teaching site. Huh? So there are uh, what we call pages for UKM. These are compulsory um, information related to teaching that need to be given to UKM. And my pages. Huh? So uh, lecturers will create their own portfolio. This is how I... Uh, 
describe my portfolio okay i will show you in a moment and then we've got the uh, the cost portfolio so at the mo this semester i'm teaching one one uh, okay now this is the old type you know where you you put your 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 files to be uh, viewed by your students but our cost portfolio now is task based uh, task based so you can have the task weekly daily fortnightly and so forth okay and uh, for each task you've got an online editor where you can embed things uh, so for example for my first week I wanted my students to go through these uh, videos and then uh, we ha we have a discussion uh, the week after okay you can also embed uh, flash files these are some mat some materials developed using um, reactivity okay so students can now view glossary for the course I know in Moodle you can also do do that okay uh, these are some others um, now using flipbook and so forth this again uh, to introduce to the learners uh, some of the advocates uh, that I'll be talking in my class okay I'll show you something else uh, okay now here we embed uh, I've embedded wall visual uh, so this is live here they can interact here so I've asked them to do some search you know and they put their sticky notes here okay and share information uh, so this is what I'm uh, what I meant by um, getting them to do things uh, to share to say the more they say the more they do the more they understand eh? okay this is called wall visual so you can embed I think any any application that has got an embed code can now be integrated in uh, Okay, let me show you one or two more things and then uh, we'll have questions and answer. Okay, we also um, make use of uh, e-notes, e-book uh, that we embed uh, in the system. So the students come here, okay, and uh, no, interact with the notes. Uh. Okay, I'll show you one more. Uh, this is the yeah. I don't know whether you have heard about the voice thread. Okay, this is the assignment for this week. Okay, uh, students will will uh, stay around. Uh, if you're familiar with voice thread, they can now interact with the content. Eh? So they can click comment here. They can record. They can video. They can type. And as they record, they can also, uh, for example, if I type something here. Okay, I can take uh, and draw something here and save. Okay, so this is the uh, cost portfolio which is task based, uh, and then uh, for the uh, uh, teaching portfolio, okay, so lecturers can actually create their own portfolio. This is my portfolio, uh, so that you know uh, it's meant for you to highlight uh, your teaching and learning contacts. And let me uh, also show you something that in the cost portfolio uh, you can also uh, view the students portfolio uh, so these are my students many of them you, you can't see the picture because they are f uh, first semester students okay uh, I'm supposed to be able yeah uh, so let's say if I want to know about David Lowe so I click here and I can see uh, his portfolio this is a he not a she at uh, the moment he has not uh, uh, added anything but otherwise I can understand a bit more about him by looking at his uh, portfolio okay I think that's uh, that I would like to share so I'm going to go back to uh, stop the sharing okay uh, I will now open for you know if there are any other questions by all means you know please uh, type or so that I can respond to your questions Yeah, uh, we did a neat analysis. Uh, we uh, and then uh, we have developed it for about six months now. But it is it is portfolio portfolio based, huh? so it's not the normal the normal uh, cost content portfolio. 
we integrate you know so the the learning is integrated with the uh, the idea is that when when the students uh, graduate they can print a cd of their portfolio and in the portfolio not only you can see the informal learning you should you should be able to see um the you know the 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 subjects the topics the assignments and so forth hmm. okay what can what what we can do to increase awareness of e-learning okay no i think uh we can we can we can have an you know, e-learning week you know uh, i think training um uh, it'd be good if you can have stuff like you know the one i showed you uh, something that is on demand that is just in time uh, so that you know uh, but uh, uh, I noticed that uh, lecturers in Malaysia uh, uh, not to mention I mean uh, excluding Zaid and Noor and so forth many of them are not very familiar with web 2.0 uh, tools uh, so I think we can start you know getting them to be familiar with uh, web 2.0 tools okay I think uh, especially in RU's the, uh, the uh, research universities the movement towards research and publication has actually uh, dampened the effort uh, for e-learning. So, um, you know, uh, it is important that as much as we are uh, uh, providing incentives for research, there should also be uh, some incentives, ins incentive for teaching and also e-learning. Uh, one type of plan, another... Um, I think that's fine. Uh, I mean, because it depends on the topic. It it it, de it depends on the subjects. Huh? Uh, my main concern is at the end of the day, learning should be improved. Huh? So whether it's blended, whether it's supplementary, um, you know, to me that's fine. But if uh, your university have got a policy that you want it to be blended, then that's fine. I think uh, probably private universities would want to go into more blended, you know. But uh, in the, in in public universities. Because we see students face to face, so the supplementary mode is still fine. Uh, we are working on the assessment, but uh, what we are doing now is to get uh, lecturers to use, um, you know, available uh, assessment. Like you create assessment using Zoho and so forth, you embed in iFollow. Uh, in iFollow, you can embed anything. MQA, MQA has got uh, uh, MQA. I think now has um, a guideline on you know uh, distance learning, e-learning. I have yet to see the document, but you know uh, as far as they are concerned, that's fine. <coughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. You're you're, you're right, uh, Prof Karim. Uh, as far as open educational uh, resources is concerned, I think it is uh, it's a, it is about attitude. People are surprised that you know how come I I put so much things uh, online and provide them for free. You know, people are surprised. Even even my VC uh, last week uh, met me and said, I mean, you should you should start commercialize your Jitsu, and you know. So I think uh, I'm a I'm a, an, an opponent of OER. I think the more we share, the more we gain. No share, no gain. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, um, I think uh, 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 my experience, I have actually gained a lot of uh, visibility through my OER. Now, people do not see this. Huh? And uh, people talk about how your research can impact the society. I think OER is a means for you to create an impact on the society and I was very pleased that you know the book uh, that I've initiated uh, web 2.02 tools in education uh, managed to impact the educational sector 35% uh, uh, of my readers are from the states uh, so uh, this is where I see you know ah oh, that's good at least you know people are reading my stuff and uh, benefiting from it eh? and I've started the series now uh, at the moment, I've published six series, one in Malay, five in, in English. So you can find them in Scribit or in ISUU. Okay. Um, just go to ISUU. Uh, www.issuu.org. 
uh, com ok and then uh, search for Muhammad Amin Imbi or you can go to script or if you can email me then I will give you the uh, the full URL uh, the other one is at scribit www.scribit scribit.com or this is a better one uh, www.myebook myebook.com uh, you can see my library here uh, prof dr amin yeah hmm. Oh, our VC is uh, uh, is very much of OER. Uh, in fact, uh, five years back when he appointed, when she appointed me as the, uh, uh, she says, no, that I mean, I want you to do something like, you no, know, MIT or Open Courseware. Uh, but I warn her that uh, it's very difficult. You no, know, the Malaysian mentality, mentality, you no know, copyright, and what do I gain, and so forth. You no. Know? But you know, our VC has got no problem with OER. Mm. Yeah, you you can do it alone and you know be satisfied with what you do. Okay, I think uh, thank you very much for your okay. time and attention. Hello? Can I? Uh, can I? Yeah. Uh, butt in? <laughs> yes, please. Okay, no, yeah, I just want to say thank you very much for taking your time to be here. Why can't I see? Okay, it's great to have you here. And uh, I, we really appreciate that you managed to share with us what's happening in Malaysia because a lot of people have no clue what is actually happening in Malaysia. And you got to see your tools. And I think those who have not tried it should explore the Jitsu because you get a lot of ideas, not just the video tutorials, but also tips on how to get started which you have selected a lot of good articles that people all the people have created that you integrate into your uh, Jitsu uh, but what I was just wondering is uh, regarding OER or open education resources I know a lot of lectures do not want to approach it or maybe they're scared that if they share they lose their value but I think one of the biggest challenges is is that a lot of lectures have reused materials without giving recognition and maybe that's also scaring the way if I share my materials I might, it might backfire. I share my materials, but somehow some of the resources in my in my slides I have not given credited or I have uh, broken a copyright rule. So it's a lot of issues to deal with. So how is the ministry considering, like, okay, we want to create OER, but we need to have a good vetting process to ensure that I share, but suddenly I get sued because I'm sharing something that I should not be sharing. So how is the ministry looking to, into that issue? Because that's one of the major issues with MIT is they have a proper vetting team that they can't just publish online. They'll have to go through the vetting team to to verify that all the content is, is 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 not breaking any copyright rules. Do you have any uh, comment on that? Yeah, I think uh, that 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 is important. And at the moment, uh, Mipta is coming coming up with a with a paper about uh, e uh, about e content about uh, OER and also you know how uh, to create a mechanism to uh, to like Melot, you know. That your staff are, are peer are reviewed by peers, eh? so we are we are trying to come up with something similar to Melot, and and you know we will table that to the ministry. But I agree with you that you just can't publish anything. Uh, there should be some kind of you know peer review and uh, you know some yeah. quality control in terms of you know sharing. Because I think the issue if, if they publish on their own social media site is fine for the university because that will not impact the university. But the problem is when they publish to like for example uh, we say that we have uh, USM Open Courseware or IMU Open Courseware. Now the fear of some from top managers is that okay we publish it we in good faith but somehow some mm -hmm. lectures have done some uh, screenshots from a book or you know taking something that they have not even asked from perhaps mission they, they maybe they didn't do it on purpose they're just ignorant or they don't know the rules of the game and then it backfires yeah I've heard cases people get sued I mean not in Malaysia but so uh, I think that's going to be a, a very big problem to deal with uh, issue especially for content that is in English if it's in Bahasa Malaysia maybe not so much we will not worry uh, so much because you know so I don't know how to look at it but that's one of the major challenges with MIT when they publish their content it had to go through a vetting process uh, even with top professors so I don't know okay yeah yeah that's that's basically it, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's fun but it's challenging now it's not that e it's not that straightforward uh, you can't just set up the portal and expect uh, miracles uh, uh, yeah, and, that's right. And, and I, it's very funny. Lectures are so worried about students uh, plagiarizing using Turnitin, but I've worked in higher education for ten years, and 
it's amazing how much plagiarism you find among the academics using uh, their own teaching learning resources without giving credit. That's why they should be exposed to open education resources because then they can reuse it without needing to That's worry right. about uh, you know, copying from the book. You know, because most, especially old generation lecturers, they like to very much uh, what scan sure. the book. They scan the book and then they take the picture in the in the in in, in the we call it uh, in the PowerPoint slides and and they don't even give. Uh, for example, I just give examples. They forget to give credit. They, you know, they forget to put where which book is from, and that's already a a, a copyright violation. So I think it's very important for that's right. the ministry focus on also educating uh, the lecturers on the open education resources because many of the subjects they're teaching you can easily use the open education resources which is sometimes even better than the book but they just don't know about it or they don't have time to go through it or they're too busy with something you know so I hope ministry will work very hard towards that part okay <laughs> I should have my own webinar. I, I, I'll have my webinar later, but I'm, I'm joining, I mean, I, what I enjoy about these webinars, we get to meet these people, and now today we have the, the amazing prof, I mean, so we get to interact with different people. If I had my own webinar, it would be very boring, so that's why I, I like to invite all these great people, and prof, I mean, is one of the, <laughs> I admire, one of those I admire locally, and we have a few more, like prof Karim will be coming, and hopefully Nuriati also want to share one, prof Rozan is coming, Zoraini is coming, so it's fun. The group here now, today was, we reached 15, which is not bad. But the good thing about these webinars, it's recorded. So those people later, a lot of people actually view the recorded sessions. And I think Prof Amin is very valuable because yeah. he's talking very much related to what we are dealing with in Malaysia. I mean, we don't, like, like, Prof, uh, like Prof Karl Kapp, he was talking about gaming, which is great. But how many in, 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 in education in Malaysia are actually developing their own games, you know, or trying to do that, you know? maybe reusing fine you know so it's we are very happy to have you here today and I hope you appreciate being here also <laughs> okay thank uh, you so, you know it, okay we have now uh, actually over time but usually I, I have no closing time but I don't know you probably have some other engagements so if you want to leave the room or you need to go to another engagement uh, you can just tell us now or if you want to continue with Q&A with the, the great people here then uh, you're totally fine uh, I don't know it's up to you yeah, I think I think I'm fine now. Maybe uh, you know if uh, if there are other questions, they can email me. Okay, okay. Thank you very much for being there, and we really yeah. appreciate. It. And hope and hopefully. Thank you. Uh, I will share some of your links. Uh, if you could share me a, 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 exactly the best links, I can put it on that same blog post because I, I will update that blog post with you with the recorded session and so on. And if you could just say the the, the most perfect okay. link to find the juice from you, instead of having two hundred links, just like if you have one okay. link, that would be great. Uh, okay. Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, okay, I thank you, Zaid. Uh, I, I mean, you're doing this as a as an OER. This is an OER, by the way. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, any questions? Uh, okay, I'm going to thank kick you. Off bye. In this room, in in two minutes. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Uh, Prof. Amin just shared his email. Any questions? Any more questions? We're still 13 people. I, I, I wonder, usually in classroom, the classes dismiss people, disappear, but somehow when we're online, people keep to stick around more. Is it because they want to chat? Or anyone, any questions? Because when I close the room, the class is dismissed or closed. So, any more questions? Nope. Any question? Prof. Amin is still here. That's great. Oh, but you have to yeah, go. Okay. Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, <laughs> you can go, Prof. We, if you disappear, we truly understand. I'm going to close this classroom. Okay, to make it nice on you, I'm going to close the classroom in 20 seconds. So in 20 seconds, the classroom will be closed. If anybody got problem with that, you can go to the Facebook group. Link. We have a link group in Facebook. And Prof. Amin, I hope you can join us. Huh? I haven't seen you uh, involved there. I don't yeah. know if you are a member there or you're not a member. Because uh, we would like your input sometimes. I know you're very busy, but you are exceptional. So we like exceptional people. So yeah. The okay. group is here. I, I'll post the group here. Is this the one? Oh, is this the wrong group? Oh, this is the wrong one. Oh, this is the right one. So no, it's not the right one, wrong one. Let me just give you another one. There's the one link. That one you already remember. We want you to be a member of this one. Okay? This one. Yeah, both. Be a member of both. Not wrong one. It's just we have two. Okay? So please link with us also. <laughs> we call it link, Learning Innovation Circle, and you are one of the super innovators, so please be with us. Okay, I'm going to close now. I've passed the 20 seconds. Thank you much, everyone. We enjoyed the session, and we'll be back. With Jane Hart, by the way, uh, Jane Hart is next on the 16th of May. Uh, 
Jane Hart, I mean, she's like the most famous e-learning lady on the planet or in the planet, whatever they call it. Okay, thank you very much. Bye.